Who were the guards? The guards were outside. And then you had, uh, we were uh, plundered from all valuables, money, in a certain barrack that they called that the registration. And who plundered everything? The NSB. And the, who were the, the NSB? Way are, the way are. Who were the way are and the NSB? The way are, that was the, the, the soldier part of the, of, of the, from the National Socialists. From the fa that were fascists. They uh, volunteered to keep order in the camp, and they were the masters. They were very hot -turn. They They kicked everybody out of the way. They went around with a letter and with uh, uh, whips in their hands, you know, yeah, oh yeah. But not well, the know. German guards were on the outside. Also, order in the camp was kept by the marshes, eh? the Dutch state police, who helped by the deportations. I have seen it. I have seen them kicking and beating people around who tried to stay away from, from, the, from the deportation. They kicked them in the trains. I have seen it with my own eyes. And they, they try, after the war, they tried to say they were so good in helping. No, no, no. I have seen them doing it. Can you remember any of their names? Yes, Wachtmeister de Jong, very much. That in the same transport that I had to go with on November the 2nd, November the 1st, that night I was called in, November the 2nd we left. My name was called. And when I go, and there was a young man in my group who tried to sneak away a little bit. And the young grabbed him and beat him, and after that his whole face was on one side. So hard he kicked him. I know it very well. I have met on our way back, after we were liberated, three years later, I have met Wachtmeister de Jong on the way back, because he came in Germany one way or another. He said he was in concentration camps during the war, which I don't believe. When I confronted him, it's in my, it's in my book, when he said, no, that was my cousin, and I couldn't prove anything. November the 2nd, we were loaded onto trains and uh, drove about two days. And on the beginning of the third night, we were in Kosel, East Germany, where our group, the healthy, able-bodied young men, were thrown off the train, and the train went on in the night. We were loaded up to a what they call the selection camp up in the mountains, Annaberg where I stayed for about a week, a short week. And uh, that is where we actually met what being in a concentration camp meant. What do you mean by that? Beating, brutalizing, kicking, and, uh, unnecessary, unnecessary gymnastics, dirtying the people. The people had to eat faces that made them eat it. There were people there, which I have known in Amsterdam, like Professor Blindemann, a very well-known dentist, in the dentistry he was. I saw him stealing food from the pigs. There were pigs there. I saw him, and that food was from the pigs was located on the latrines who were on a elevation. Everything in the latrines went down with the food from the pigs. He crawled into it and ate it. That, that fast people then degenerated in the camps. And that was so sharp in my mind that by all the things that I know I have to remember that I have to remember that. That is one of the first things that I met in the concentration camps.